Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this week I'm tackling a uh, blown Dodge Charger. This is straight out of the blister pack. Nothing, uh, nothing extravagant, but it's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool car to begin with, and the casting does it justice. Um, I have nothing against the rake. As a matter of fact, I have a build planned later on this year that pretty much will take advantage of that. But this is going in a different direction, and I'm lowering it a little bit. Not as much as I usually do. I usually put these things on the ground. This time, I'm doing it a little bit differently. Those are the wheels I plan on using, the uh, slotted aluminums. I think they're perfect for muscle cars, and um, I have a few sets kicking around, so I figured I'd toss them on there and see what happens. And I think they look perfect. So that's the uh, the build plan. You can see right here, I'm going to be cutting off in multiple places and redoing the chassis. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So, yeah, to, to, to do this, I'm trying things a little bit differently. A lot of times I'll hand make a chassis from scratch um, or I'll shave the hell out of a chassis if I can. This one... Uh, I just want to try something a little bit different. If you see where the wheels go, it's really bumped out. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just cut this and use three pieces, the center section and the two end sections. So uh, mainly because they have valance panels and lights and so on and so forth. So you need those because they fit underneath the bumpers. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut uh, pretty much where the interior would sit and uh, make sure you trim all the excess. I mean, you can use a knife, not a knife. You can use a, a coping saw or a uh, jeweler's saw to cut this, but I find it a lot easier to use a, a cutting wheel. It does create some melted plastic that you got to trim, so just be conscious of that. You can file it very easily afterwards. It's not a big deal. So that's part one. So that's going to snap right in there. And the interior would actually go on that. And then it's cutting the front and the back off. And I'm pretty much just cutting it right at where the wheel well openings would be, um, both front and back. And I'm keeping the holes. So what it's going to do, it's going to allow me to snap those into the posts without having to cut the posts off. So right there, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to be using where the wheels sit on the chassis as my new mounting place for the axles. Overall, I think this this is going to be a uh, this was the first time doing it this way. Um, I never never attempted it. So, but it does allow me uh, the flexibility to pretty much bring it as low as the casting will allow. So, right here, you can kind of see where I marked it off. I put some tape on one side so I could show it on the camera because you really can't see it on the chrome. But I'm pretty much just going to notch up to a certain point. Uh, I kind of took a guess based on the fender wells. I probably could have gone a little bit lower in the front, but I was limited on the back, so I didn't want it to have a ridiculous rake. Um, I was trying to avoid that with this particular project. So um, I went up about maybe maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch, which, you know, in, in scale is quite a bit. Same thing on the back side. Made it uh, made it a little bit difficult in the back, and I'll show you in a second. But the front worked out really, really well. And there's pretty much, I wanted to get it so the top of the rims were at the bottom of the wheel wells. So here you can see I kind of taped off where I wanted to, where I thought I needed to cut to get these rear wheels to fit in there and have clearance and not bind. So I kind of marked off what was going to, you know, I didn't want it to... Uh, cut to the point where when you looked in the back window you couldn't see you know everything was all completely hoard out so I wanted to make sure that I I did my best that I could to try to make sure that it would uh, not not be obvious that I that I cleaned out the wheel wells to that degree um, but overall you know it's a trial and error thing and every casting is different so you know not necessarily you know what works on this charger may not work on a Chevelle or a Nova or um, even a roadrunner. So you just have to be, you know, slow and steady. There's no 
particular um, one way to do anything. Um, you know, it's I always like to experiment. So this was my first time using a chassis um, of the interior as the mounting for the wheels. So it was a learning curve. But you can see here, uh, even after trimming and marking, I still have more to trim. So it's always easier to cut more than to cut too much the first time. So I would rather be safe than sorry. And it's plastic. It takes two seconds to trim. So just be patient and take your time. That's all I really do. Um, I know patience really isn't one of my virtues, but I hear it works well for others. So, <laughs> But you can see right here where it's still kind of catching just a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of angle it off and, and follow the uh, rear seat because I'm trying to not cut into the rear seats, which I don't, but it's close. <laughs> it's real close. Um, so here you can see that just that little bit extra gave me the clearance that I needed. And then again, make sure you file and, and trim, trim the excess off and any... Um, fuzzies that come from the plastic. So after stripping it in the citrus strip, this is pretty much what you get. Um, I always use a um, wire wheel attachment on my Dremel to, to clean off the residue from the citrus strip and a lot of times it'll get any excess paint that's stuck in the in the body lines or the grills or any place like headlights um, if, it, if it has it on it. It just helps get it off and get the get the residue it makes it easier for the next step. Um, it's not absolutely, it's not necessary, but it's something I like to do. It's part of my paint process. The next process is I use a scotch bright pad and I, this really actually does give it a really nice finish. So um, it, it helps and it cleans off, um, you know, whatever. It just gives it a nice finish so you can see what you're working with, I guess you can say. And it also gives a nice adhesion for any primer that you're gonna possibly use. The um, I actually experimented this time. I didn't experiment. I've used it before, but um, I broke out the Steino Res primer uh, for a change, which is nice because it filled in a lot of stuff. This casting is a little beat. You can see a lot of little nooks and crannies and casting lines that just don't belong there, and they needed to be sanded off, so I just hit it with some sandpaper, various grades, whatever seemed to work. Um, so I got my my two my front and my rear um, valance panels, and then I get the body, and then I broke out the Steinol res. What I like about this is it's it gives it a nice finish, and it's thicker than the Tamiya uh, fine white and fine gray primers that I normally use, just because they're quick and it's just one less time I have to clean my airbrush, which is usually why I only use rattle cans. Uh, but the Steinol res you can't you can't beat the results on it. So, and it's it's sandable and it works out really well. And just some of those little itty bitty imperfections that the the fine white primer might not fill in this primer does which is you know part of a purpose of primer aside from you know having a place to put your paint on it <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna wet sand there was a couple little dust particles that i thought that needed to come out so while i was at it i just kind of touched up everything and i'm using 1500 grit sandpaper um it's like i said it's not aggressive in any way shape or form and i'm barely putting uh any pressure on it and it's just another one of those steps that you can take to make sure that your finished paint job looks as good as it possibly can um you know primer this if you put it on right has a nice you know nice clean finish but you can't beat wet sanding and having a nice nice smooth level surface to put your paint on so and i kind of hemmed and hot on paint i actually put a post up on facebook and instagram um, between two colors and it was pretty dead even so it was hard to pick <laughs> um, i'm gonna paint the interior ivory white after doing everything else in black so i just thought that that would be a nice offset and i went with petty blue and no i didn't put any kind of decals on it or anything like that i just liked the the blue itself and I'm going to use my automotive 2K clear um, system that I've been using for two or three years now. And while I'm at it, I'm going to clear this. I got this from a subscriber, Thomas Ward. He sent it to me, but he was hesitant to uh, clear coat over the decals. Um, and I'm not afraid to do anything, so I did. <laughs> uh, and kudos to him for sending it to me. It came out cool. Um, being in the Army, I thought it was, it was really nice. So this is what it looks like after the clear and everything's ready to be put together. And that's about it. This is the Nova after I cleared it. Um, he did a really good job on this. I love the decals. Um, 
it's just one of those, you know, certain cars people send you and uh, they speak to you. And this one, this one spoke to me. This is what we started with. Very high. You know, this is Snoop Dogg high. <laughs> but this is what we ended up coming up with. I think it came out really, really good. Um, I love the color on it. I like the fact that I didn't put all kinds of crazy decals on it. Um, I thought about it. I have some. But I did not. Um, overall, you know, I learned some things. I learned some things not to do, which is the whole point of uh, branching out and trying new things. Um, you know, it, it's only a car. I mean, if you screw up, you can start over again or go spend another 99 cents and get another one. It's it's That's what's great about this hobby. So... Um, you know, everybody has their own tastes and their own likes and their own skill sets. And you're not going to start off building a, you know, I'm still learning every day. And I aspire to be like some of those guys from Indonesia who have little itty bitty fingers, I guess, because I don't know how the hell they do half the stuff they do, but it's amazing. Uh, but that's kind of where I, I, I seek inspiration. So anyways, I got a few glamour shots at the end here. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you. If you haven't, again, subscribe, like, share. Um, or whatever, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I will catch you on the next one.